I'm going to do some high time frame analysis on Bitcoin here. I do think we're at an interesting level. We've already got a little bit of reaction, but ultimately we need to be looking for opportunities to short as opposed to just trying to long every level on the way down. Check out Prime XBT. They're the partners for these streams. Use code main M A Y N E 50 to get 25% off of your trading fees. Thank you so much to the Prime team. I've left the link below for you guys to use. If you want me to keep doing these streams, keep helping me out. Use that link, use that code. So markets look like shit. We've talked about this for a while now, guys. I've been very clear that we're in a downtrend. Deviated above the high, broke back below. That was your signal to start getting short on crypto. We even had a breaker play out right here. Break above, back below, retest, sold off. And we're trending actually very hard to the downside because what you would have liked to see is a retest here. What you would have liked to have seen is a retest here. What you would like to see now is a retest to here before continuation. But in practice, price doesn't always give you what you see on PowerPoints and perfectly drawn up examples that people might share with you, right? The idea of you know getting that perfect retest every time in a trend if it was that easy, we would all be rich, right? But oftentimes when price is trending very hard, you will have your support level here and it's gonna come back there. You'll have your support level here and it will come back here and then it will go up. It's not as easy as it looks, right? And it takes time. This is the ideal situation. This is more like reality. You know, if you've been waiting for these high time frame retests, we haven't been getting them. The low time frame has been shifting and then the high time frame trend has just continued down. Price is trending down very hard. We're 50% off the highs. The top is in for a while, for sure. The question is, is not where is the macro bottom? Because I think anyone who's trying to predict the macro bottom is guessing. I think at this point, where is a level where we might see some relief? Why do we want to find a level where we might see some relief? It gives us opportunities for low time frame longs, low time frame because they're counter trend. And if we get relief on that bounce, I want to be looking for areas to short. I think we're very, very fucking close to these lows. I don't see how these don't get run at some point. So if you're looking at the weekly chart here, I've basically marked off the top of this weekly bullish order block, the down candle before the up move that broke market structure and caused this entire rally. You can already see we came into it. We got a nice Nice little reaction. If we get the month of January, in my opinion, which is coming to a close in eight days, the month of January closes below $35,000. I think we're definitely going to run these lows. Where do we go from there? I don't even fucking know. We're right at the mid range of this entire move that lines up with that weekly order block. So to me, this is an area that could provide some relief. If we get some relief in equities, because that's what's driving this market, people seem to forget. Like I'm one of the people who believes the correlation is legit as fuck. I talk about it all the time. I've shown countless examples of the correlation between equity and crypto, the inverse correlation between crypto and the dollar. What do you think the dollar is doing right now? The dollar has been in an uptrend since the start of May. What's Bitcoin been doing, right? Since May had the rally here, the bottom on the dollar was basically the top on Bitcoin here. It's not always going to be a one to one, just like the stock market. Everyone's like, oh, the correlation's dead because the stocks have a down day and crypto goes up. That's what happened here, right? Stocks went down, crypto went up. Everyone's like, the correlation's dead. Then stocks shit the bed, crypto shit the bed. What happened here? Stocks shit the bed, crypto shit the bed. Every single bull run that we've had in crypto has been lined up with a up move in the stock market. The 2017 bull run. Look at stocks. Where was the top 2017? right here, that bull run. Stocks go sideways, go down. We have a bear market in crypto. This is the low in crypto. Then we have that run up to like 14K or whatever. COVID bottom, stocks rally again, crypto rallies again. This is a risk on asset. It resides in the risk on asset basket. So if the stock market is going for an epic collapse, Crypto is going with it. People like to talk shit about the correlation when there's like those brief instances of decorrelation, but at no point has crypto really given us any evidence that it is decoupling from the stock market. I would love for it to, because crypto, Bitcoin specifically has shown itself to be more of a store of value than a currency. So you would like to think that it would maybe act more like gold, which is performing well right now, while there's uncertainty in risk on assets, but it hasn't given us any evidence other than brief periods of decorrelation correlation. Crypto's only been around since what, 2008 or 2009 when Bitcoin was created. What has the stock market done since 2008? We've been in the greatest stock market rally, arguably of all time, the greatest risk on asset rally 
of all time. And in that time, crypto was created and done extremely fucking well. So to think that there's no correlation there, I think is silly. The biggest risk that we run here is that there is a period of massive, massive, massive drawdown in the stock market. Some people like Keyboard Monkey just posted a thread, which I think is worth a read about the everything bubble, right? We have housing, stocks, tech, crypto, everything is overinflated. There's no real value behind how high the stock market is, right? Is the economy objectively better off now than it was two years ago? Absolutely not. How come stock prices are flying? We have these extremely bloated tech companies that are now getting absolutely slaughtered, by the way. There is that argument or that viewpoint where it's like, this is the everything bubble. Housing's gonna crash. Tech is gonna crash. Stocks are gonna crash. Crypto is gonna crash for ages. And we're gonna go into a big recession, right? Crypto did not exist during the last major recession. And was this recession inevitable? I think so. Could COVID have expedited the recession? Probably. But, you know, just looking in my personal life, I have a ton of friends, right, who are working regular jobs, none of them can afford a house. None of my friends can afford a house because housing is insane. To buy a house in Vancouver, where I live, you need like $2 million. You get a condo for a million bucks. So none of my friends who have regular jobs can afford housing. So will the government allow a long recession to happen, right? Because it, it, it will fuck up the country for sure. So there is that viewpoint of like the everything bubble, everything's gonna die. I don't really know. I'm not trying to predict it. I'm not some macro economist, but things look shaky from a macro perspective. And if the stock market implodes and sees a serious drop, I'm not talking like to here, I'm talking like a thousand point drop where we go from like here down to like here back to like COVID levels, right? Or early COVID levels, unless crypto miraculously decouples, which it's shown no evidence of doing so yet, it will get fucking smoked. You have to be aware of all possibilities. I'm not trying to be some fucking doomer here. I've been telling you guys we've been in a downtrend for a while right? You're not, you don't want to get bearish at the lows, but you have to be aware of what's going on in the economy. They're not printing money like they were here anymore. I'm still macro bullish on crypto long term. But what I'm saying is if the stock market takes a shit, are you going to be prepared if Bitcoin goes sub 30k? So let's just look at the last three bull markets here. There's your high in 2017. There's your low 83%. Here's your high Here's your low, 85%. I told all my friends and family to buy crypto down here because I said, based on previous history, usually when it's down like 80 to 90%, it's usually pretty close to the bottom. So if this is the bull run and this is the top, 80% off the high takes us below $20,000. I'm not saying we're going back to 10K, but if history is gonna repeat itself, this is a possibility. Unless this time it's different, this is possible. I'm not saying we're going to 10K, but you have to be aware of all possibilities as a trader and as an investor. Just because Bitcoin might go to 100k, that means it might also go down first and it could go down a lot. And when you have something that goes up 2000% in a year, you have to be prepared that it might retrace a large portion of that move. But again, I look at it as opportunity. If Bitcoin is going to take a really deep dive, that to me is an opportunity to short Bitcoin and an opportunity in the future to buy things like Bitcoin and Ethereum cheaper. I'm not being like, holy shit, I'm fucking wrecked if we go down there. Frame that as a positive. You're going to have an opportunity to buy cheaper in the future. I'm not in the business of trying to call the bottom. I'm just trying to make you aware of the macro situation that's going on here. Don't be blind to it. Don't just be like, no, bro, crypto can't go down. Well, a lot of people have been saying crypto can't go down and it's down 50% in two months. A bounce will happen at some point, maybe from here, maybe from lower, and people will get bullish again and tell you the bottom is in. And it probably isn't. If you were around in 2017, how many many times did people tell us that this was the bottom and we're going back to all time high every fucking couple weeks when we had any sort of rally but this was like an 80 percent rally so absolutely there's reasons to be bullish but the trend is down so you have to temper that bullishness so looking at the high time frame i think we're at a key spot here got the mid range of this entire range we've got that weekly order block here so could we see some relief here Possibly. If we get some relief here, I'm looking for us to come up and retest around 39,000 here, which is this bearish order block. So if we're able to put in some bullish market structure on the low time frames, this would be an interesting area to get long into. And then this is where I'd be looking to short between 39 and probably $41,000. And I do think after that, we likely see another leg down. We're too close to these lows, in my opinion, to not see them run. So maybe we get something like this, right? and then another run, then maybe we run these lows. We've got the 0.62, right? So the 
the macro fib, the OTE sweet spot of this entire move up right around here. So maybe 25, 26 K gives some sort of reaction. Where do things get really scary? Well, I think if we stay below these lows for a consistent period of time, you got to look left. Where is support? If we lose this level, it's here. We've never gone back below a previous all time high in a bear market. I'm not saying we're going there. But if we stay below these lows, that is the next area of support. 20K. Guess where the next area of support is after that? You don't really want to know. Probably here. And then probably here. Those are some pretty scary numbers. And even all the way down to 12K, that's still not 80% off the top, which is abnormal for any bear market that we've experienced so far. And if Bitcoin does this, just imagine what altcoins are gonna do. They're gonna lose 90% and then they're gonna lose another 90% after being already down 90%. I'm just trying to be real with you and give you guys some realistic possibilities. If we're gonna see a sustained downtrend, this thing can go a lot lower than I think many people are prepared for. I like kind of 25, 26K as an area, which would be that macro fib and then a run of those lows. So these are the high time frame areas that I'm watching on Bitcoin right now, just based on the weekly chart. Decent reaction here already. If we get a green week on Bitcoin, guess what? I'm gonna be looking for Bitcoin to rally up into 39 to 40K. And I'm not just gonna look to short Bitcoin. I'm also gonna look to short a lot of these alts that are proving to be a lot more reflexive. One of the beauties of a bear market is when Bitcoin goes down, altcoins go down way fucking more. So if you're looking to get those really big moves, you can short some of these alts that were really strong on the way up. They're going to be really strong on the way back down. If we get a green week, this is something I'm looking to play. Long side up into here, short side back into here. Ultimately, I do think we run these lows. If we stay below these lows for a significant period of time, these are the downside levels I'm looking at. Yeah, it's ugly. Yeah, it's horrible. But I'm just trying to be real with you. If we are able to miraculously like maybe we wick here and close back above here like we get a capitulation wick because we haven't seen capitulation yet people are being like the fear and greed index is at extreme fear it's been at extreme fear since we we're at 50k we're now at 35 but capitulation is fast and ugly and you see massive amounts of lick i mean yeah this is like this was a fast move but this has been a relatively clean downtrend this looks more like capitulation than this so if we're gonna see capitulation it's gonna look like this it's gonna be some very big body four hour candles that go really fucking fast it's it's gonna be a high velocity move. Maybe we get some sort of capitulation move down here and we're able to like close back above here. That to me would be the most bullish instance for Bitcoin is running these lows, but then being able to kind of maintain this is a higher low and it's just an SFP and this would be a higher low. That would be the most bullish situation, I think. Other than obviously, maybe we just hold here and then we reclaim some levels. But until we start reclaiming some levels, there's no reason to start calling for the bottom yet. It's too soon. But I do think eventually these lows get run. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I think we're going to be in a trader's market for the next little while here. You know, if you're just a holder of Bitcoin, looking at this, it's not going to do you any favors. If we drop way further, buy some more, I guess, right? But for me, I think we're going to see some moves up, some moves down, and a lot of sideways. I don't think the bottom is going to form in one candle. So this is kind of my high time frame macro view on Bitcoin on some support now if we get a green week in stocks we could see a green week in bitcoin i'd be targeting 39 to about 41,000, and that's where i'd be looking to get short i think these probably get run eventually if we lose this low here are the levels i'm looking for on the downside and I know that this is all doom and gloom and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just trying to be real with you because there's still idiots like BitBoy and Mooncarl and these friggin' assholes who are being like, Ethereum's going to 30K this year. Here's the next altcoin pick that's gonna make you rich. They're gonna make you go to the fucking poorhouse because they don't know what they're talking about because they don't actually make any money trading. They make money by getting involved in pre-sales and dumping on you. They make money through advertisers. They make money through ref links. They don't make money from fucking trading go search moon carl and buy the dip he's been saying buy the dip this entire fucking way who has money left if they've been buying the dip for the last 50 percent no one who has money is someone who doesn't actually trade isn't actually buying the dip i know for a fact moon carl can make up to five to ten bitcoin a week on his ref links alone okay so you think he's really worried about what fucking price 
Bitcoin is at or what his followers are fucking doing. These guys don't fucking care about you. Trader Main, he cares about you. Trader Main even loves some of you, most of you. So be very careful. You see a lot of people who are telling you to buy the dip. There's fucking, you know, this coin's still going to, it's like, dude, we're in a downtrend. In my opinion, if you were telling people that you're still ultra bullish and you should be loading up on altcoins, you're a fucking idiot. That's why I've started posting on YouTube because I think we're in need of someone who's a little bit more realistic and is gonna be honest with you that I lose money, I make mistakes, and the market can go down sometimes. Obviously, I'm macro bullish on crypto long term. I would like us to go higher overall. I hope we aren't going into some crazy, ugly bear market. I would love for us to never come back here to these 20K levels. I'd love to never see us do that. I'm just trying to be realistic with you and as usual, give you honest opinion about whether or not we can go up or down. But I think I've been pretty consistent for months now saying that we are in a downtrend. So plan accordingly. Be careful with altcoins. Don't be fucking stupid. So zooming in here, here we are at that level I drew. And as you can see, we came into that low, never closed below it. Saw some nice reactions, nice Nice wicks. 12 hour, there's no setup here. Like unless you just market bought this thing, but I ended up getting in along on Ethereum and basically it was this, right? I saw the move. We had the initial low. I'll zoom in even more. The initial low came back higher low. That's what caused me to long. And then I exited my long here. It fully retraced to my entry. And then yeah, today we got a little pop with the futures opening green. I took profit here. My entry was 23, like 30. So like right here, exactly as I explained it to you, right? So I said, okay, we just had this big move down and a big scary wick, nice reaction, came back, filled in a bunch of this wick and then we held. So I longed, my stop is right there. Where am I targeting? I'm targeting this high right here. To me, I'm like, I am in trader mode here. I'm not thinking I caught the low on Ethereum forever. I'm just looking for a quick trade and I ended up getting a very nice trade here. So I longed here, I posted it on Twitter and then I posted my exit. My exit was at 25.20. It went a little higher, but if I would have held and been like, ah, oh, maybe it's gonna continue going and I went to bed, I would have woken up almost back at my entry. We got one more little pop up here. This is starting to retrace now. So the question is, is what are we gonna see this week? So we'll start with Bitcoin, but that was the Ethereum trade for you and, and Bitcoin gave you a similar setup, right? And these are the kind of things you need to be looking for. Little range trade, where's your target? Right there. It literally runs the high and then sells right back off to your entry. So you gotta be nimble and quick. This is not a swing trader's paradise on the long side. If you get a really nice short entry, absolutely, you can probably swing it. You're in line with the trend, but when you counter trend, in and out, in and out, right? So we're holding this level all right, forming a little bit of a range. You could even use this low, like this level as the range low ran the range low, rejected the mid range, tagged the range high, back to the range low, back to the range high. We also have an inside day set up forming here. So we're now within this candle, closed within the body of this candle. This is something I could do an educational video on one day. So you can use that as your range. And very simply, if we have any sort of run, so for today, for Monday, if we have some sort of run below yesterday's low and we hold it, so like this, that's a long. If we run above the high and then get back below, that's a short. And then obviously, if we get above here, 36,500, and we are able to confirm that as support, that would be a long trigger into here. And then obviously, if we break below here and we start putting in bearish market structure, showing that this level is now resistance, that's a short opportunity. So the inside day setup just gives you two very clear levels to form a bias from. So right now, I'm essentially watching those two levels, right? I actually prefer this level here we already have effectively the same range with that high time frame level i gave you there and then this level here right so i think if we're able to get back above this high i think you can long this into here we have some people who longed late here right and caught this last leg who are probably sitting comfy 39600 is that weekly bearish order block right there Okay, so this would be a long setup i'm looking at right now is either from effectively right here and then above here into there, okay? And then I'm looking to short up here, absolutely. If we are unable to get back above this like 36,200 area, this looks pretty ugly because we just ran anyone who shorted late here. We ran all their stops. And if the stock market goes down, that becomes a high and we're gonna sell off harder. Below obviously this current low at least and probably lower. So this is gonna be a very critical range. If you're day trading and you're trying to get a trade in early this week, you really wanna see us regain this high here for a chance at 39K. Because if this just becomes a deviation above the highs here and stocks sell off, that's your stop and you're looking to short. 
So we'll wait and see. This is support until it's not, right? This is support until it's not. So the best chance I think the bulls have, you could argue that this is a breaker right here and you could long this with your stop here. So like this. Based on how price is right now and how bearish it looks, I mean, first of all, the good chance the move is gonna happen 10 to 12 hours from now. All the moves that have happened over the past couple of weeks, that's why my sleep schedule is completely shit, has been happening like two hours going into New York Open. I live in the West Coast of Canada, so New York Open is like 6 to 6.30 a.m. So that means the moves have been happening at like 3.30, 4, 4.30 in the morning, which is 10 to 12 hours from now, right? You could long here, I think, on this pullback. This is a risky play in my opinion, but you're essentially saying, okay, this is the low. We got a low, a high, higher low, higher low, higher high, and you think stocks are gonna go green. This would be a very aggressive long right here. I'm not personally taking this long, but I do think it's valid. I'm much more interested in us reclaiming here. We get back above this level here, 36,500 essentially. I think we run 39, but this would be a very aggressive long, effectively like right now or a little lower, stop below the low there, targeting 39. Me personally, I would wait for us to reclaim 36,500. Get above 36,500, I think there's a good chance we go up to 39K. On the bearish side, if we are trading like this in New York and then we come up and retest this like this and then reject, you're now shorting that. Or you short the breakdown below the 34,655 level. All right, guys, hopefully this is making sense. I'm talking a lot this video, All right? Is everyone kind of following along a little bit? Everyone on the same fucking page. We'll try and wrap it all up in, I'd like to say an hour, but I'm 36 minutes into this and I haven't even said shit yet. Stop losses mostly work in traditional markets. You will get hunted in crypto. Where do you think the term stop hunt came from? It's too close, man. Those people generally are stupid and don't know what they're fucking talking about. Typical crypto Twitter. Trust me, man. My, my investment is in a good fucking company, a good fucking coin. It probably isn't. As usual, my levels are the best. I draw the greatest levels. I mean, I'm not as rich as I was a few days ago, but I'm fine. McDonald's HR manager is hiring. I don't know if you got my resume there, bro. I got a lot of great work experience. Maybe it's in your spam folder. You gotta realize, man, like BitBoy, I dislike the guy. Part of it is because it's just funny. Part of it is because I'm fat phobic. I think he's ignorant because he's not fucking smart. I think last time crypto went down, BitBoy changed his TikTok account to like talking about top 10 haunted houses in America. Like, you know, a lot of people People have no fucking clue what they're talking about. They were just a bull in a bull market. We got to do something about crypto YouTube, guys. It's really bad. And I think I'm the man for the job. I think I can go toe to toe with that big fat fuck BitBoy and that little skinny bitch Moon Carl and all those other phony influencers who are just peddling trash. I don't know if I'll be awake or not. My sleep schedule is absolutely fucked. Like I slept till like 3 p.m. the other day, but I also drank like almost two six of whiskey. So maybe that's related. I don't know. How many of these coins do you guys recognize? What the fuck are any of these fucking coins? So many of these coins are going to zero. To fucking zero. In a microsecond, like Daniel Pena says. In a, a microsecond, whoop. In a microsecond, whoosh, zero. What the fuck are any of these coins? Just fucking hyped up, I guess. Fuck BitBoy, fuck Moon Carl, fuck MM Crypto and all those other fucking goons.